Good morning, everybody. Wherever you are, whether you're watching live or on catch up, welcome to today's Healing Minute from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. I'm John, speaking to you today from Hillingdon, West London. And I need to warn you that if you hear a loud noise overhead, please ignore it. We are on the flight path of North Old Airport. The music you're listening to is by Aeolia. The CD is entitled Angel Love. And this particular track is Celestial Sanctity. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for the Healing Minute. This session is an opportunity for all of us to send healing to the people and animals we know are in need. Today's reading after the Healing Minute is about Harry Edwards, the ordinary man, the man behind the great healer. What were his hobbies? What did he like? What was his indulgences? And the finishing music is again one of my personal favourites. It's from a group of West, or should I say chaps of West African origin who lived in the Harlesden, North West London area. And their claim to fame is that they're probably the only group that ever played the Hammersmith Odeon and were led down the front aisle or the main aisle of the theatre with a full grown African elephant in tow. But more about that later. I'm going to turn the music off now as we begin to relax. So in preparation for the healing minute, please close your eyes if it's safe to do so. And in your mind, take yourself off to your own personal sanctuary. Somewhere that you feel perfectly safe, totally at ease and completely peaceful. Take a deep breath in and inhale the healing energy. Allow it to flow through your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. As you breathe out, let go of all your personal stresses and any disease in your daily life. Let's attune, as Harry used to. There's one of those planes. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As our crown chakra opens, we visualise a column of pure white light filling our bodies. Then feel the balance and harmony within our body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of our feet and our base chakra. We feel our connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. Today I'd like to read you the Sanctuary Prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit. And through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought. Bring me into closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon and that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. We now come to the great invocation. 
And it's interesting that I have, with my wife, been doing a bit of decluttering during this period. And I came across an older version of the Great Invocation, issued by the National Federation of Spiritual Healers. It's not dated, so I don't know when it was issued, but I'm guessing probably 1970s, 1980s. And I'm going to read that slightly older version to you today. So this is the NFSH version. You will notice a few minor changes. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May love return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and the people who have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. We shall be silent for a minute. Thank you. Our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. So let's talk about Harry or Henry James Edwards to be precise. The ordinary man with an extraordinary ability. But firstly a warning from me that I've gathered this information from various sources and it may well be flawed. And if there are errors, I apologise. And if you know any other information, please let me know. Henry was born to lead, as well as born to heal. Born to heal was the title of the first biography written by Paul Miller. He was the eldest of nine children, three boys and six girls. And as a young man, he was adventurous. But one of the things we know is that he was much enamoured by the new magazine written by Robert Baden Powell, which was titled Scouting for Boys. And he took it upon himself to lead a patrol of friends to Hampstead Heath to do scouting activities. He was often described as slightly built, silver haired, with great charisma and mild manners. He was undoubtedly an optimist. And he never gave up on the positive until unusually he was proved wrong, which didn't happen very often. When he trained in a printing profession, which in those days was a closed shop, 
where only close relatives of printers were allowed to train in the profession. Ironically, of the printing trade union, the, the units of the printing trade union were called chapels. Harry did not like printing, but he had to make a living to provide for his family. Even then, after his long apprenticeship finished, he did not just get a job as a printer, he struck out and ran his own business as an entrepreneur. In his years in the army, his leadership qualities were recognised and he became a captain in the engineers. He had a very strong sense of social justice and used his negotiating skills during his army career to get benefits for his local workers when he was posted to Iraq and also later for compatriots in the British Army in India. If you want to know more about these times, do listen to my dear friend and colleague Rowena Wood's talk on Harry and his life. On return from the war, he joined the Liberal Party and, he, and I am convinced that had he been elected, he would have risen to prominence. As a young man, he had a stutter and was nervous of public speaking. But he always faced problems full on. So in the cause of the Liberal Party, he decided to use Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park in London to practice his oratory on behalf of the Liberal Party and he drew large crowds and developed his skills, and they heckled him mercilessly. The challenges he undertook politically were huge. In South East London, where he lived, liberals were not well liked, but this did not deter Harry. And although he did not succeed in being elected, he did create an amazing following. One of the causes of the Liberal Party he promoted was the National Insurance Act which ironically came into force in 1948 and established the NHS. This was two years after Harry had opened a Burroughs Lee as a healing sanctuary, and he was aged 53 at that time. Because Harry was a leader, it's no surprise that he was a co-founder of the National Federation of Spiritual Healers and was its inaugural president. Plus, in another battle he took on the church and the medical profession to promote the cause of spiritual healing. But that's a story for another day, and it's very long and tortuous. Harry had his failings. Harry, as many others were in those days, was a smoker. He liked to do Maurier cigarettes. And we have a charming photo of him in the conservatory, talking to a coach party, indulging. Those cigarettes were packaged stylishly in a red and white cardboard box, and those of my age may well remember them. He was not a vegetarian, but would honour those who were by not eating meat in their presence. However, he did, as Ray Branch tells us, love meat pies and sausages. Neither was he teetotal. Harry would have an occasional glass of wine, but never beer or spirits. But for an indulgence, he would have a liqueur. He also did not like drinking plain water, but added squash, usually Ribena. He kept a bottle in his desk and also by his bedside. What is now Bluebells and the library was in Harry's early days a games room. It had no mezzanine floor, just a gallery round the side, and he loved to play badminton for exercise. We're told he was very good. Phyllis's wife also organised dances, and that was very popular with the locals. You will notice on the webcam that covers the Sanctuary Chapel, it, the chapel is always adorned with flowers. This is very much in Harry's tradition. He adored flowers and made sure that they were on display in the sanctuary and on his desk at all times. Lily of the Valley was a favourite. And I know personally when I visited in 1984, the smell of the lilies permeated the whole of the corridor outside the chapel and the conservatory. They were, of course, grown at Burroughs Lee and tended by his sister Ivy during her lifetime. Even his bathroom 
was adorned with cactuses. And as Vincent Hill tells me, the greenhouse, which is now the healing rooms, was used to cultivate them. He was very keen on taking an annual holiday to relieve the constant pressure. His favourite was to cruise the Mediterranean and the ship he really liked was named HMS Andes. It's a single class ship which accords very much with Harry's social agenda. However, in order not to attract attention, he officially described himself as an author. Well, at that stage in his career, he had written 12 books. This ensured that he could rest and read. Now, some might, thought, might think that his favourite would be spiritual tomes, but it wasn't. His favourite reading material was detective and spy novels. He was often seen in a deck chair, enthusiastically consuming the latest James Bond novel. He would send a daily bulletin to Burroughs Lee. It was typed up and distributed to the family and staff. And it was evident fools were not suffered gladly by Harry, who had very high standards. And he took delight in overhearing other passengers recounting tales of having had spiritual healing from him or at Burroughs Lee. But he said nothing, just took cover behind his spy novels. He had other hobbies. He loved tropical fish. He had a great sense of humour and enjoyed conjuring and became extremely adept. But by far his greatest hobby was painting by numbers. Ray Branch suggested he should paint without, but Harry insisted he always wanted to use the painting by numbers kits. So Harry, we know, was, had an extraordinary talent, but in many ways he was a very ordinary man with ordinary pastimes. I hope you find that interesting. I certainly did. Next time, on the 16th of, I think it's Friday the 16th of October, I'm going to do a bit about Harry's legacy and take some extracts from the eulogy which was given by Ray Branch at his memorial service in the Sanctuary Chapel. Now, enough of me. Time for parish notices and some music. If any of you good folk viewing has any further information to add to this story, we'd be delighted to receive it. Uh, we're always finding new things out about Harry and Burroughs Lee and we revel in it. And also, if there's any specific topics you'd like me or one of the other presenters to deal with, please let us know. So parish notices. Tonight is a first. 7.30 tonight on Zoom, we are trialling an open healing circle. And uh, this will be opened by Martin, our Chair of Trustees, administered, as always, by the amazing Teresa, who does fabulous facilitating but uh, a face from the past of the sanctuary, Stephanie Beanart, will be doing a good input. I've yet to find out exactly what she's going to do. She returns to our community after a sabbatical. The Healing Minute tomorrow will be done by the lovely Irrepressible Valerie, and I'm sure she will be accompanied by at least some of her menagerie. There is meditation on Thursday at 2pm on Zoom and Facebook, but I don't know who's going to do it this time. And of course, all things are available on the Harry Edwards website. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time today with us for the benefit of others who are in need. Anyone who has received healing from the sanctuary in whatever means is always on the distant healing list for a month. And if you need to let us know and update us what's happening, please send an email or telephone. If you just need to chat, or want to book one of the new contact healing appointments, call our girls, I should say ladies, shouldn't I, uh, Veronica, Valerie or Joe, and they will arrange it for you. We are open for contact healing, but I have to warn you that COVID secure procedures are very strict, as you will imagine. But distant healing always works, and contact us. All of our past events, on digital, or digital events, I should say, are available on our website, on YouTube and on Facebook. So please stay safe and healthy. And now for the music, which I hope the Gremlins will allow me to play 
this week. This is Sunshine Day and I hope it brings some sunshine to you by the wonderful Osibisa. I've got to say it's a favourite of ours. Uh, we danced to that on our honeymoon in Yugoslavia in 1976. And, saw, and I saw the band live twice. They are a fabulous bunch of musicians. But I'm going to say thank you and cheerio. Have a good day. And although it's grey outside, I hope the sun shines for you. <laughs> 